Hi, this is Justin Mansell with Active Optical Systems, and this is a quick video on how to get started with one of our Gigi Shock Hartman Wavefront Sensors. So, I'll cover some setup prerequisites, and then talk about our optical system that we're using, and then go into some more detail on how to use the software. The first thing we recommend doing is downloading the latest version of the AOS software from the AOS SharePoint site. This can be found at sp.aos-llc.com slash sites slash portal and you navigate to Downloads, Export Controlled Software. There's a variety of different versions here. Um, I usually go to Current and pick the highest version, download that, and run through the installer. The only thing I'll say about running through the installer is that we recommend installing the development version of Vimba, you get options for user or development, and uh, we recommend you select the development version. But there's a window that will pop up to alert you to that. The next thing you need to do is plug in all of the hardware. Today we're just talking about one of the Gigi wavefront sensors, and specifically um, one of the ones that is power over Ethernet capable. So to use this wavefront sensor, what you will do is plug an Ethernet cable into the back of the wavefront sensor and into one of the PoE injectors. And then the PoE injector data line will go directly into the computer or into a switch. We recommend plugging directly into the computer. We seem to find that the connection reliability is better that way. Um, but some people replace, uh, have had success replacing the PoE injector with a powered switch or router um, and uh, running through the router into the computer. So you've got a variety of options here, um, but we recommend going straight into the computer. Next you'll have to plug into a USB port the provided software key. All you have to do is plug that in, uh, the computer should recognize it, find the driver, and uh, install all of that for you. This is the optical system that we're going to be working with today. I have fiber coupled a green laser and am putting the tip of the fiber at the focus of this C-mount lens. We like to use this commercial C-mount lens for, for collimation for tests like this because it gives us flexibility on adjusting the collimation um, just by adjusting the, the uh, knob on the lens here. Um, I have a shear plate in my setup today and this will verify collimation. I have an iris in here to uh, limit the aperture of the beam but that can be pulled in and out as needed and then this is the um, Gigi wavefront sensor uh, mounted up here. So I'm loading up the AOS software I am loading uh, one of the more uh, recent versions of this software. It's a development version uh, that we're working with here. And I have a live view of our optical system over here um, being recorded by a webcam. So the software is coming up now. It's going through and checking uh, all of the hardware connections that it has, specifically the cameras. So the first thing I do when I open this up is I select which camera I'd like to acquire from. There's a variety of options here. You can use the simulated file camera and process data from your hard drive uh, in image formats. Um, we have network camera options. There's an option for connecting to a phantom vision research camera. Um, and uh, we have options for uh, National Instruments frame grabbers. But today we're going to be working with this Mako G30B uh, wavefront sensor. So I'll select that. It will go through then and initialize the connection to it. Then I can press single acquire and start seeing frames come in. So I will turn the AOIs and centroids off and we can see this nice array of spots sitting here. Okay, now we're ready to take a look at the optical setup. I'm going to adjust the fiber coupling to the laser here so that we can get a little more light through. There we go and see that on this webcam. Now you can see in the shear plate here um, an array of, of um, lines corresponding to collimation. What I can do is show you that I can adjust the collimation by adjusting uh, this adjustment on the lens. And I'll try to get it back to as close to collimated as I can. 
I have a lens assembly here that uh, is sitting off to the side that we're not using. The light then is going uh, through the shear plate and illuminating the lens array. So unfortunately uh, with it as bright as it is and the camera turned down as much as it is, um, I'm saturating the wavefront sensor. You can see here it, it uh, pops up a warning about that. The way I like to adjust the saturation is to use the histogram mode. And so what I'll do now is adjust the coupling into the fiber. Um, there we go. Oops, too low. Let me bring it back up a little bit. A little too high. For today's testing, I think will be okay if I can get it into the 80 or 90 percent range, I think. Let me try the other knob here for the coupling knobs. There we go. This is a little more sensitive. There. Okay. That's good enough. Um, what we're seeing here is that we have um, just over 10 pixels saturating, but we have uh, a bunch of pixels that are uh, poorly illuminated, which is what you'd expect based on this image. Then right around the 05 or so percent, uh, we see a lot of pixels all of about the same um, number of, of illuminated counts. Then and toward the end here, it rolls off. So uh, now I can go to the image, take a look at this. Uh, the image is flickering a little bit because this particular laser is flickering a little bit. There it goes again. And I can overlay the AOIs. The, let me just stop this. Uh, the AOIs that come up when you first load the software are an internally generated set of AOIs. If you've never run before, if you have run before, what it'll try to load is your previous set of AOIs. So it'll remember where you saved it and try to load that up. This is a set that I had loaded earlier. Looks pretty good for this, but I'll still go through the calibration process. Uh, you have two options on calibration. Uh, one is to um, load a calibration that was provided with the wavefront sensor. So all of the wavefront sensors come with a, a factory calibration. And this will allow you to make a measurement relative to uh, a very flat wavefront. The other option is to create your own array of AOIs. This is especially useful when you're doing a relative measurement like we're gonna to try today. So um, I'll say single acquire, there we go. And go to reference. I like to use the centroid reference. We have a variety of options and they're better in different conditions. There's a threshold adjustment thing that you can do for these. But for now, I'm just gonna say create reference and we get this array of AOIs showing up. The only thing I see that I'm concerned about right now is that some of the spots toward this edge are very close to the, the edges of their AOIs or closer than I'd like. So what I can do is I can filter the AOIs using the filtering mechanisms for small and dim AOIs. Since the beam is pretty uniform, the dim one's not gonna be very useful. The small one might be, but you can see that the size of these AOIs is pretty uh, much the same as the rest of them. So that's not gonna be terribly useful either. So the other option you have for filtering is right clicking and dragging on the image window. So you have to be in the image mode for this. Releasing and, and then you get a variety of options that'll pop up in a context menu for things like delete outside rectangle. You can also do circles and ellipses and, and these kinds of things. But I'm gonna say delete outside rectangle and now these AOIs toward the edge here that I was worried about are gone. I can immediately take another frame here and just put it into a 2D plot mode. We can see here that I've got some tilt that is coming up as a noise term. I can say subtract average tilt and uh, reanalyze this. Now I've got what amounts to an astigmatism term, uh, primarily a little bit of focus as well, it looks like showing up. And those are um, showing up here. I'll put it in table mode. This is one of the new modes of the software. And you can see that, yes, sure enough, I've got uh, some tilt term showing up uh, when integrated over the Zernike circle here. Um, even though I've subtracted the average tilt from the entire frame, the tilt over the Zernike circle can be different. Um, I've also got some 90 degree astigmatism, a little bit of focus, and some 45 degree astigmatism in here. So 
this tells me a little bit about what I'm seeing as far as noise goes. Um, I can go in here and take a look. I'm at about 25 nanometers um, RMS for this. 36, 42, and a lot of this noise I think is coming from the um, blower that we have on the table, the HEPA filters we have on the table. So I'm going to reach up here and turn these HEPA filters off and see if we get a little better noise performance by turning that, that HEPA filter off. So now I'm going to do the, the same set of tricks I just did, single acquire. Um, I can create a new reference, but I'm just going to tell it to recenter the spots. And what this does is it uses the current location of the spots as the new reference location. Say so yes to that, another single acquire, and now this looks more like noise to me. There we go. So indeed the HEPA filter blowing on the table was producing noise and uh, you can see we're getting much lower RMS wavefront errors and even peak to valley wavefront errors now. Okay. So, so we're seeing on the order of 20 nanometers RMS noise in here, but we can still make some, some measurements. Uh, this is the slope vector that are being read in. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is try to make a measurement of a lens. So what I'll do is um, go back to this live view so you can see me doing this. Um, and I'm going to try to put this lens, uh, I'll just use the one meter lens here, and put it in front of the wavefront sensor and see if we can make a measurement. So for now I'm just going to go continuous acquire slide this one in and um, you see some funny things happening here I'll explain what's going on there in a second but I'm going to also turn off so, uh, the average tilt subtraction there we go all right now I can slide this in and try to line it up in front of the wavefront sensor um, I usually do that initially visually um, just to see if I got it lined up and then go through and see if I can center the wavefront curvature up so that's nominally centered. It looks like I have a little height problem there, but it's not too bad. It's good enough at this point that I'm willing to, to stop this and, um, oh, let me take a look at this lens. Actually, the lens I put in is a 300. So we'll take a look at the 300 first. Um, the interesting thing about putting a 300 in is that we are getting very close to the dynamic range of the wavefront sensor. And so what you can see happening in the slopes is that a lot of these slopes are reporting as blue or acceptable. Uh, some of these are starting to get into different colors, reds and greens, um, and this has to do with different variants on being an unacceptable slope measurement because the spots are getting too close to the edge of the AOIs or actually falling outside the AOIs. Or uh, in the case of the green, uh, this means that there are some spots here, in fact, let me zoom in on them, that are uh, putting some intensity um, into um, the uh, of the adjacent AOI into um, uh, the current AOI, that kind of thing, and this, this produces a, a larger spot um, than is normal. So uh, we're having some issues with this 300. This is now starting to exceed the dynamic range of this wavefront sensor, but uh, we can do a couple of things to um, use the wavefront sensor to still extract the curvature. So the first thing I'm going to do is save all the data to my desktop here. Desktop, just say test. Yes, we want to overwrite the old test. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention this. Uh, now that we're starting to make measurements, it's starting to be important. The wavefront sensor software automatically loads the correct pixel sizes and uh, whatever you've set for the last separation length. In this case, uh, we have a nice wavefront sensor that it has about a 6.7 millimeter effective focal length on the lens array. So these are all set properly for us. I forgot to, to mention that you need to check that. I'll turn subtract average tilt back on here um, and do a single acquire. There we go. Um, and what I'm going to do is try to remove all of the AOIs that are suspect. So I'm going to draw a circle here and say delete outside circle. So now I've got a lot of AOIs that are looking pretty good. Some of these are green in here. Um, this is a new feature we're putting in to try to help people determine whether they're in a, um, a non uh, extended dynamic range version of this or not. We're starting to see this saturated term come up. Let me take a look at how bad that is. Uh, the laser intensity is right at threshold the kind of thing and so it's bouncing around a little. I think we're going to be okay for right now. Let's take a look at what it's predicting the uh, radius of curvature is. 
So up here, we can see the radius of curvature being predicted, and it's saying about uh, 250, maybe 260 uh, millimeters. Well, I mentioned earlier that this is a 300 millimeter focal length lens that we're working with. So why is it reporting 260? It has to do with the fact that there is a separation distance between the lens and the lens array. So the principal plane of the lens is about, if, if I take a look at this, uh, about 40 millimeters away from the lens array. And as such, we're getting about a 40 millimeter drop in the uh, measured wavefront curvature. So that kind of explains what's going on there. Um, the other thing that happens when you put this lens in and start to concentrate the light is that indeed the intensity goes up and this is another reason why we're seeing some saturated behavior here. So now let's try measuring um, a lens that's a little easier to measure. Let's try measuring this 1000. So I'm going to go in and take out the 300, unscrew it from this uh, LMR1, put on the 1000, and make an adjustment here on height a little put that in there uh, by eye that looks close again I'm gonna go back here take the subtract average tilt off and I'm gonna leave this AOI set that I have and you can see that I'm not quite centered left to right so I can slide this in a little bit that's pretty good and now you can also see that um, I'm in a regime still where I've got uh, very little uh, very few of these that are reporting as uh, bad um, measurements. But now we can take a look here and try to guess, uh, take a look at the, the curvature. So it is reporting uh, 940 in one axis and 995 in the other axis. Again, we're only looking uh, at a small section of this lens. We're actually uh, only looking about three millimeters in the center of this lens. And I could have this slightly tilted. I could be offset a little bit. Um, so we're, what we're seeing here is measurements of this lens that um, probably are a little suspect and we could work on uh, alignment a little bit and get that better. Um, let's see if I can do that a little bit here. Let me go in and adjust the height a little bit to loosen this collar to do that. All right, we are still seeing one axis that is closer to a meter and another axis that's closer to 960. So I'd expect 960. Um, this is like 980. Um, so we're seeing a curvature that is consistent with this being a one meter focal length lens, because again, we have about that 40 millimeter separation between the lens and the uh, lens array. There's a little bit of a difference here, and this could be any of a number of things. It could be a defect in the lens. It could be uh, a misalignment, uh, slight misalignment in the optical system. Uh, for now, I would look at this and say, yep, I believe that this is about a approximately a one meter focal length lens within the tolerances of, of the manufacturing probably for this part. Okay, so this walked you through the basics on how to make some initial measurements with a GIGI wavefront sensor. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any questions uh, on this or on any aspect of an AOS product, please don't hesitate to contact us. We look forward to hearing from you.